Did that really happen? Yeah, well, that, <laughs> that's what I was wondering, because when, when Bad News was on at the Old Vic, and I remember Adrian and, and, and you, Nigel, both went, oh, my God, we've not seen it for 30 years. Yeah. I wondered if it's funny, and then the whole audience loved it. And as you've just seen from that reaction, how did it feel sitting in that audience just now and watching that again? I enjoyed it. it was, I hadn't seen it for so long, and, uh, yeah, it was quite fresh to me. You know. Also, when you're making telly, you don't get to hear an audience laughing. That, no. You don't see the thing that you get in a theatre, <coughs> which is the joke plays, the people laugh, the next joke plays, the people laugh, and it's, such, it's just a treat. It was great know. hearing the laughter. Yeah, to sit and, and witness it as it's meant to be, you know. Because on telly, you, you don't know what, how, it's, how it's been received. You don't know if it's getting laughs. Sadly, now you do, because, of course, Comic Strip was mainly pre-Twitter. Now, you know, even the opening credits, this is shit, you know, yeah, there's just a speed <laughs> of that. Um, yeah, yeah. The, uh, this Doc 2 episode's disappointing, <laughs> um, but it's... Uh, I, I wondered also, that, that Castle Donington footage, because I think, well, Adrian, as far as I can see, he really did want to be a rock god. You know, there's now out with the Bad Shepherds, and I wondered yeah. how much, when you went up there and when you were on tour, did you sometimes think, we have to remember, we're kind of a band, but we are meant to be a joke. Well, um, it started out as a joke and then became very serious, wasn't it, when EMI gave us some, a lot of money to make a record. <laughs> and, we, and we had some real fights then. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was just about the skit. It even brought it on again now, watching it just now. The, my stomach went, oh. Because that was the scariest gig ever. Those people really were there and we really were playing. And we really were shit. There was a lot of... There was a lot of energy there, I thought. Yes, a lot of energy, but the wrong kind of energy. <laughs> but, but, yeah, no, that, I mean, even now, that, that it triggered the, the fear reaction in me, just now, watching that, to think how scary that was. I was thinking of something funny on, on watching us smash up that hotel room. Because about a, five years later, I went back to the hotel to ask them if I could make another film there. <laughs> and she said, oh, the last time we had, we had some people here, and they were, one bloke threw the TV through the window. <laughs> I said, no, really? Oh, well, no, we're nothing like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what about, I mean, because I saw you at Hammersmith when you were with the main band, but you said earlier on that you supported ACDC as well. Well, Pete, uh, uh, prior to uh, Bad News, prior to the comic strip and everything, Peter and I were uh, double act. The well, outer we go limits. back a long way. And in fact, prior to The Outer Limits, we do go back a long way. Uh, in fact, we, we met at uh, <coughs> Glastonbury Festival, the first one or the second one, 1970. And you were going to, you were going to drama school. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we, we formed a... a, a a rock theatre band is what... We wrote a script, called. set of a festival, didn't we? wrote we? a you script. Played. Neil appears in that script. And there was a... There was a there we, we always had a, a, the idea of being a comedy band. And we did a couple of tours. Well, we were both like Frank Zappa and Captain Beefheart type of thing. We, and we, and we, one of the... Um, what was the double act we saw at the Oval? Sal's Meat Sal's Market. Meat Market, an American double act, the guy from... Very TV. influential on us, I thought. Yeah. They did a lot of improvisation, and we, we, we had two bands, didn't we? The, the first one was Julian Marshall. Marshall Hain. The Marshall it? Hain band, who were sort of a bit bland, really, for a bit too sweet for us. comedy. Yeah. They were very sweet pop music. <coughs> but they did the songs in, be, in, between our, in, in, in between our shows. And then when we took it on tour, um, we, had a, we had a band. Who was in that band? Larry Elliott. Larry Steele, was it? Larry Steele, yeah. bass player. Um, I can't remember the rest of the names. And, and that's when we supported uh, various bands, because we, we... And Motorhead, too. We supported tour. them as well, yeah. Yeah, to do that show, and we sort of bastardised that show. They were, they were all reading books, actually, down, down Motorhead, the stage. Motorhead, yeah. That, yeah. Lemmy and Phil and Filthy Animal and the other guy. They were all reading books, and... Before they went on. Before they yeah. went on, they all had their head in books, and they just, said... Yeah, just read some... And they said, uh, they want to do their gig. How, do you, how do you make a living then? We said, well, we got an Arts Council grant. <laughs> <laughs> and I, they said, well, that sounds True. good, doesn't it? And just picture the motorhead going to get an Arts Council grant. <laughs> 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 so we did a sketch yeah. about that, didn't we? Yeah, we did. 
Yeah. We did, and then we, and then we did a sketch. We were in the Outer Limits uh, called Lenny Flowers, yeah. um, which is the Lenny P Peters was Lenny Flowers, who was who uh, was Being trying to get the band tabloid, a tabloid exposure, wasn't it? Tabloid exposure, trying to get the band back together yeah. again. Do yes. your Lenny Flowers voice. No, it was like uh, this is my story about how I became a rock and roll legend. Yes. So, you know, it's very sort of drawn out, and it's all done with sun speak, kind of, you know, like... The Sunday people. <laughs> and he presses the gate, where he's, he's living in a big flash house. Tries to go and see the other... I, I press the buzzer, and what happens? Who is it? <laughs> and oh, so that's one me, of Lenny, them. Yeah. The other one is in the band, was a, had turned into a record producer, yeah. and was full of all the... Bullshit about the business and everything. I don't, remember, I don't remember that bit. I don't remember how it ended. But we, I think there's, there was a man down there who sounded like he knows it off by heart, which <laughs> is one of the great things at the Slapstick Festival. If the people who created the sketch don't remember it, there's normally someone in the audience <laughs> who does. You know, it's very, very useful. Yeah. But that, that is... So, a, so there was a history of... of um, we went to the comic... When we started the we comic strip... Being, um, uh, uh, being connected to bands and music. Yeah, we did both play in bands. But when we started the comic strip with Rick and Aid and Lexi, <coughs> um, Rick and Aid and Nigel and myself thought, well, what should we start a band? And we called ourselves Nice Weather. It's sort of a real hippie band, nice, sweet, happy hippie band. We played the venue, didn't we? One gig or something. The venue, yeah, yeah. I remember when that was going. And then, so that was all, that all happened. We, we did one or two gigs and didn't, didn't go anywhere. But when Channel 4 gave us the... The mm. idea of doing it with six, six half hour comic strip films, all different things. Bad News was the first one, and that's when it all started, really. And we should remind everyone that it was before Spinal Tap. Well, it was it about the same time, actually. Yeah, they're, they're, they're entirely yeah. different films. To me, I always find it fascinating that people make which came first. And you go, well, one is about a band that are never going to make it, <laughs> and one is about all of those that's egos nice. of that kind of pomposity. And it's, and it's a kind of a very different thing, I think. It's, it's interesting because it's the American version, even though they're playing an English rock band, the Americans, you couldn't get four American actors to play a band who are shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they've got to be the great, you know, they've got to be successful and, and, and vice versa. I don't think, you know, English, the English humour, <coughs> you don't want to go out there and say, yeah, we were actually really successful. What was funny about that, you know? What was extraordinary watching that was that that was our very first ever gig as bad news on stage. Our first gig was 70,000 people. Well, Donington was the first, oh my Absolutely God. Absolutely, and we were rehearsing the night before in Derby in a little studio thing. Yeah. We had no idea what the scale of this thing was going to be. And we arrived at 8 o'clock in the morning to do other filming of bits and pieces. And, <clears throat> and um, there was mud fights going on at 8 o'clock in the morning, with thousands of people throwing mud at each other. We thought, we're not on till 2. <laughs> And then it turned from bottles of piss. They sell, yeah, they sell the beer in plastic bottles, and people drink the beer, piss into the bottle, and throw it at you. That was who was the band who had that? That was uh, Daphne and Celeste at the Reading Festival, who faced a barrage of piss with the greatest dignity I've ever seen. <laughs> they laughed and they just kept going, and they thought, "We're Daphne and Celeste. They're just going to throw piss at us." And they, you know what? It's a fascinating thing to watch, like we were talking about Lemmy, that, you know, I think people, when they would go into, I'm sure a few people here have seen Motorhead, you know, yeah. would have seen them live, and Lemmy would just stop the gig and say, you put those things down, we're not continuing, and that was it, like, he, he was... Yeah. Well, oh. Lemmy, Lemmy said he couldn't believe that we invited people to, to be rude to us, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. in fact, we only, we only ever once said, gave something away, which is, I think, when we supported Iron Maiden with Tyler Smith, yeah. and... Uh, we said just once, Adrian said, we're going to do a song now called Hey, Hey, Bad News. And he said, some people have been saying, fuck off, bad news. It's not fuck off, bad news, it's hey, hey, bad news. <laughs> and he never had to say that again, ever. Because yeah. every time we played, every time we played, they knew it right away. <laughs> <laughs> what was the general reaction from, from, from musicians? Because, of course, a lot of you know, they, they, I would imagine they could look and they'd go, oh, my God, we were in a band with the They saw, themselves, we were, they saw yeah. themselves in that. As Ozzy said, that's exactly what it was about, being in a van with a, you know, somebody's got the van, somebody's got the PA, and, you know, that was it. Because I think Bad News Tour, to me, is quite like... Have you ever seen Slade in Flame? Which is no. an amazing film. It, who, who here's seen Slade? The, 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 <coughs> it's a, a genuinely a fantastic... The first half of it is like a kind of knockabout film about a bunch of Midlands bands, and the second half becomes quite a kind of dark view of the music industry. 
And of course, it didn't do Slade any good because people wanted to knock about film. But it's like it has that somewhere underneath the humour <laughs> is something kind of horrific about the fantasies of what it is to try and be a band. Yeah, yeah. I so I just wondered, you know, for um, your that sense of playing out that fantasy, being aware of that fantasy, well, how much it changed your kind of view of the music industry? Well, we, after the Donington thing, we then got this record offer from EMI. We went to a studio with Brian May producing it, this, this record. Yeah. Um, for about oh, six, seven weeks, we were doing eating the catering. It was all coming off our, exactly as it was <laughs> in the film. It it was, was, yeah. We started living the film. They were, we were paying for the catering. No, like, I do think our catering bill, as I remember it, was 50,000. Was it that much? Something like it was that. Definitely thousands. We never got it back. So, so we were there for all the food. <laughs> so if um, there's anyone in from EM, <laughs> but we did a tour. It was a non-returnable <laughs> advance. But we did the tour. That's when everything started to happen, wasn't it? We were doing the yeah. tour. We did a tour and, and to, to, to promote the album. We, we, it was a two album deal and we had to put a second album together. Brian left the microphones on while we were recording. So it must have, there was acres of recorded material and we mostly 90% stayed in character throughout the whole process. And so all of those bits in between the songs on the, on the <coughs> album, those are edited versions of the, of, the, of the improvisations we did, which just, it went on and on. I mean, Adrian ended up doing the, the, the majority of the edit on that, because there was hundreds of hours yes, yeah. of, um, of nonsense. But it, it's quite coherent. Once the edit's done, they're funny, they're funny sketches. But the, I think. the noise and the traveling, and we had sheep's eyes thrown at us. On the tour, yeah. There's, there's all these eyes on the stage, wasn't it? Where was sheep's that? Eyes. Portsmouth. It was a town where there's a medical school. <laughs> That's a relief, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. They hadn't gone collecting beforehand. There was liver and sheep's eyes. <laughs> so, in your, in so we drove to Exeter that night, after having got that, and as we came through Dorset, we came around this corner oh, yeah. by a place called Dorset Knob Biscuits, so we were driven across past that, and big laugh. And, uh, <laughs> There's this scooter lying in the road. And we thought, should we stop the car and, hello? And this guy, what's happened? He hit the bank and both... Gone all the way down. Had gone over the, not into a field, down a quarry. And we scrambled down the side of this quarry. You tell them what happened. Yeah, because you were, and Rick, me, as me, I Rick remember, and Rick. Was, I don't think Aid was with us, was he? No, it was just you, me and Rick. And Rick. And we got, and there was this guy... And there's a guy going, up oh, there. oh, oh! You know, he's just had a motorcycle crash. And, and Rick crawls down to him and goes, what's the matter with you, you know? And yeah. <laughs> well, it was, we, we were trying to keep him conscious. And it, well, you did yeah. Neil. And you did I had to do, Rick did Rick. Oh, it's me, Neil. I did Neil. Yeah, yeah no, it's me. And, <laughs> and this Neil. guy was, we had to keep him conscious. So we were, we were shouting, Peter's up there flagging down the next car. Getting, getting the ambulance through. Yeah, and, and, and uh, eventually, uh, uh, paramedics came and down. But we, yes, we got me and Rick tracks. doing young ones routines. Doing them? <laughs> just, just to keep him conscious. Dying know. man, yes. On the, you were, on the you were saviors. I thought. I, I, we well, saved I imagine, him. It was I imagine that he thought he died, and he, as he's going to heaven, he's gone to hell. Ones, yeah. Young ones are there <laughs> to greet him as he comes into the, through the gates of St Peter. You know. Yeah. But we went to Bristol about two, a week later to play the, just you know, around the record, Colston Hall, um, which we're, we're still allowed to call it that, by the way. Anyway, so Colson Hall, then, so you're Colson asking, Hall, yeah, and the, so the people, two, his, his brother and sister or came, I think, came around back to so with a poster, yeah. and we all scrawl rude things on it. <laughs> you stupid cunt, you know. <laughs> that would have been the worst criticism, wasn't it? You <laughs> and Rick doing your very best material, and someone goes, I'm just going to die instead. And that's <laughs> why uh, this has gone down. Yeah. I, I wonder yeah. when you were talking about, because I remember some of the EMI stuff. I've got the Gatefold album. I've got the video single uh, of Bohemian Rhapsody as well. Right. right. And then you had, uh, but I haven't got a VHS player anymore, so it's become a very Schrodinger kind of box. And then, but then also, you know, th these arguments, had, and doing that second album, because you had cashing in on Christmas on that one, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. And it, there was a big video. I mean, you filmed that video, I think, the night, the, uh, the Hammersmith Apollo night. I think it was. Very possibly, yeah, yeah. yeah. I so saw that again recently on YouTube. I thought it was quite a good single, that. <laughs> yeah. Cashing in on Christmas, I it's got a good tune. What's wrong with that? 
I think it's better than the darknesses don't let the bell end or whatever. I think it is. I genuinely think it's a better Christmas song uh, than that. But Pete, you were saying there that once it became, we have actually signed a contract that sense of that night, you know, of, did it make, cure you of any, you know, wouldn't it be great if we were in a rock band rather than working in comedy? Did that kind of just go, right, no, this is a better world? I thought it was extraordinary that the four of us, extant, you know, comedians, acting comedians, had gone on this journey, you know, and we sort of somehow, and I, 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 just watching the film, I thought it was, they, they looked good, really, you know, the band. I thought, I mean, I thought the only one who, 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 who fell for it is, as you said, in the first place. I think Adrian still sort of harboured the idea <laughs> that it was great to, to, to do it. But I mean, it was pretty... Um, I mean, he can play as well. <laughs> so I mean, at least he's got an excuse. Rick, I, don't think, I think Rick didn't play a note, did he? I don't think Not. the whole time we were there. So how did that work then? That's what I, I wondered that at Hammersmith. What was actually going on then? So if he's not playing at all... What, the way it worked was, he was taught... I, I, I taught... I can play a bit. I was rhythm guitar. So we, we'd teach Rick a one-string line so that it wouldn't be... He, so that at least he could keep a beat. Like, so you had a bassish sound. And then the bass part is what I would be playing on the rhythm guitar. Right. So basically, a, a bass part was... I was doing on rhythm right, guitar because right. I'm not a, I'm not very good at the top three strings. I'm better at <laughs> <laughs> you don't do the top three. It sounded more the like a, 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 a that which kept a, and I would be. I, I think it's true to say that I'm because I'm doing less jumping about than the others. I was kind of holding together the structure of the song usually. So there's me remembering we've got to do three of those. Now we change. Now we do that. So there were, I, I was doing what a bass player would, would do, I suppose, I, I think. So I was holding, holding those songs together, um, and that left Rick free to do what he was extremely good at doing. <laughs> and it meant that Adrian, if he would, you know, he, he could listen out, it would be there what was necessary for the next verse. And likewise, Peter doing his magic fills. <laughs> See, that's a great, what a great trick it is that you think, what would Den look like if he was playing anything? He'd look like he had to concentrate really hard <laughs> and it was agonising and about to go acting, wrong. It wasn't acting, which it is was helpful. <laughs> no, it wasn't acting. No, that's me trying to... No, it's a great, that's a great look yeah. you do, isn't it? A kind of puzzled look. With yeah, <laughs> yeah. What about Lemmy? Because obviously Lemmy w that then went on to be in uh, Eat the Rich as well. That's right. Uh, and, yeah. and so, how as you said, you, so you'd actually, in a previous incarnation, you had supported Motorhead. We had. This is when I said we, we were Basing Stoke Tech, actually, it was his call. Yeah. And he was also, um, he played a considerable role in South Atlantic Raiders. Mm, yeah. Um, in Devon, we were filming in the middle of Devon, weren't we? And the heat came down, everybody was very in awe of him. I've told this story too many times, so stop me if you're bored with it, but he came down to the hotel in the middle of Dart Dartmoor, and everybody's so excited, so they all drink a lot, and everybody's staying up late, but at the time, I thought of myself as a very professional actor, <laughs> so I went to bed early, because <clears throat> um, there was a five o'clock in the morning call, so I, I went to bed early, and there was a five o'clock in the morning call where the, the driver and the runner are meant to be there in the hotel lobby to get you to the set. And um, five o'clock in the morning, there I am, excuse me, um, uh, there I am down in the hotel lobby. Everyone has been drinking with Lemmy all night long. And the runner and the driver weren't there. They were completely crashed out. <laughs> the only person who turned up with me 5 a.m. was Lemmy. <laughs> so there's me and Lemmy, you know, went to bed. professional went to bed. actors, <laughs> ready to start filming at five in the morning in Devon. No one there. I just love, I, I mean, that, that wonderful documentary that came out about Lemmy about ten years ago, where you had various bands, Alice in Chains, talking about one night with him, and he had a bottle of Jack Daniels and passed it to them, and they thought it just meant the bottle went round, and then they realised actually it was a bottle each. <laughs> and the, the, the number of stories where a band would go, and uh, you know, Lemmy went on uh, stage that night, and uh, we were in hospital for a week. You know, it's <laughs> like just 
Remarkable. Now, I don't know how, have we got time for some questions from the audience, Chris, as well, wherever you, you, you are? Chris? Has he gone? Yes, we have. I think, I think we're going to do some questions from the audience. It would seem unfair. Not, have we got five minutes? Actually, I can't see your hands. We've got 10 minutes. 20. We've got as long as you want. <laughs> the, uh, so let's, let's have, if anyone would like to, like to ask a question at the back there. Yes. Uh, is anyone, anyone uh, like to ask? Yes, over there. Is that with that hand? Oh, hello. How are you doing? Great. There. That's, yeah. Yeah, Alba, we're forming bad news with Colin Grigson's um, uh, bastard son, Greg Davis, playing the bass, but better than Colin Grigson ever could. What was the question? <laughs> the answer was yes. Yes, uh, yes. The <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that was, I have to say the delivery means you passed the audition, undoubtedly, though. That was pretty great. Um, yes, we've got a question over there. Yeah, you said, um, I'll tell you what, do, do we, uh, if you wait for the mic, just for, sorry, you make it like a kind of less fascist version can of the hear question. Him, we can't hear him. Um, <laughs> it's a long way around the mic. Sorry, there, there, and the mic. Yeah, and then, uh, <laughs> and uh, no, 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 wait, wait there. That's, that's good, no. It's um, coming. Um, <laughs> Here it is. Right. Just anyway, so thanks for. Thank I'm you. sorry for we run out of time. <laughs> the, uh, yes, I've forgotten what it was now. Um, <laughs> but you did play the whole Monsters of Rock gig, so that must have been quite scary. We we only saw you know, sort of five minutes of it there, but you played the whole gig. Um, how many tracks did you play, and 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 how did it feel to to make it all the way? How long was the set? I can't remember. Not as long as it was supposed to be, I think, because. Um, what had happened was the roadies thought it would be really funny if they sabotaged our, our gear, the leads to the guitars. So we were on stage for about five, ten minutes with nothing happening because nothing was working. And they were going, <laughs> like, you know, we made bad news, you know, fuck up at Donington, which is basically what... The, they and they didn't realise they didn't have to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And you also, I'll take it, I'll just find out where another question is and then I'll do a fit. Yes, yes, in the middle there. 20, just while that. 20 just, minutes, though. I, uh, yeah. as, as we I did remember, about four or five yeah. numbers, I four think. Four or five right. numbers, I reckon. So you do, hey, hey, bad news. Uh, you'd, I was disappointed. I was hoping that was going to crack a jack the audience. And then there was uh, uh, Warriors of Genghis Khan. Would that have been in the Probably set? Probably Master Bike. Yeah. <laughs> Master Bike is one of the greatest uh, <laughs> titles of any. Uh, yes, we've got the, uh, down there. The other Donington performers, their assessment of the band, how scripted or spontaneous were those reviews? Oh, the, what, the which bits the did stars? you say? They're like Scorpions and, uh, no, they just and, and Joe Elliott. And say something bad about this band, they're so awful. Can yeah. you give us some... I think that's what they did, wasn't they? They weren't scripted, no, they got to say their own... Yeah, well, again, Lemmy's right. one is so you, as you said, Lemmy's one. You know, Lemmy was poetry, someone who's, isn't it? Yeah. It's Burroughs, it's William yeah. Burroughs, isn't it? That whole yes, yes. absolutely fantastic. And I wonder, I know, that, was your last ever bad news gig? Was it the Marquee? Did you say? Yeah, the last one was at the Marquee, uh, 1990 or something like that. Yeah, Christmas, just before Christmas, and we went on. We got uh, bottles of piss and glasses thrown. As I got, got I've still got a scar here from the, <laughs> the, the, those big perspex. The heavy Perspex pint mugs, not the little mm. floppy ones. And I got one right there with a splinter of the Perspex. During the university. Yeah, and I had blood all coming down me. And a Adrian was spat at. Adrian was spat at and kicked this guy in the face. And it went in his mouth. The spit went in his mouth, so he kicked this guy in the face. <laughs> and at the end of the show, he came round back and knocked on the door, and I opened the door, and this guy with blood pouring down, saying, where's Adrian Emerson? <laughs> and so I said, oh, he's gone home, shut the door, and we got a letter next day from his mother saying, saying he's a war correspondent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and why did Adrian do that to him? <laughs> See, I'm wondering if he was a war but, correspondent, or if he got home like that, he said to his mum, oh, I'm a war but we have, <laughs> we had We had two aces up our sleeve, because watching from a high in that... In that venue with the second marquee club in Shan Cross Road was Jeff Beck and Brian May. And we had this little thing worked out that made the audience go, was when um, Rick goes, Adrian, you're just, just such a rubbish guitar player. And so Adrian says, well, okay, watch this. And he mimes as Brian May plays this amazing little <laughs> virtuous thing. <laughs> And, and walks on, and of course Rick goes, ah, oh, see, it's not, it's not, and he says, no, I'll show you again then. And then of course it was Jeff who came on. <laughs> <laughs> and, and everybody went, wow, you know, 
two, two, uh, you know, two legends on the stage with us, and of course and they were we so nice to us then. We got to play the finale. Mum and Mum were all crazy so, now. Yeah. And, and we next, played, yeah, it's great, isn't it? Yeah, we went into the Slade number. All Mum were all crazy now, which is great fun. Um, and next day, the word got around about Jeff and Brian, and there was a queue up Charing Cross Road, right up to Dominion, trying to get tickets. Only held about two hundred people, you know, the venue. But so that did, was we do, the, did we do two gigs then? We did two nights, yeah. I don't remember that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we really <laughs> were in rock and roll, <laughs> <weren't> you? <laughs> yeah. I, I think we got we got time for one more question. Is is that okay? If, if anyone's got, I think there's a question up there. Is that right in the in the gallery? Have we got a question? I don't. I want to make sure no one's missed out on the. No, everyone's asked it. Good. Thank you very much. I'm glad that they they they, they replete. Uh, the um, we're going to do so. Uh, in the next, the next show, and as I said, there's still a few tickets left, only a few, but uh, we'll include Fistful of Travellers Checks uh, outtakes and also include, I'm, I'm going to end up talking, mainly asking about the work of Ronald Allen. Oh. So Ronald Allen, Crossroads fans, <laughs> Ronald Allen went from Mr Hunter to being Uncle Quentin, uh, which is one of the greatest pieces of casting that has ever occurred, and we'll probably be talking about John Waters, and well, a lot of other things as well. Uh, so there was stuff from the comic strip that you've never seen before, and as I, as I mentioned right at the start, the comic strip to me, and I think not just my generation, I have a lot of friends who are uh, younger than me, uh, who it was one of the most important things that ever happened in our cultural world. Channel 4, comic strip, it's a 30-minute show, that's what it's a 30-minute show. It's a 30 minute show. Yeah. So, yeah, come and, come and join us, and... Uh, Let's have a big round of applause for Nigel Planer and Peter Richardson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.